Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY refitting good old Athena video. If you're new to my channel, this lovely looking boat here behind me is Athena. She's a 1987 Warrior 38. I'm in the middle of a somewhat extensive refit, the end goal being for my girlfriend Ava and I to be able to move aboard in roughly two years and then start cruising. In this video, I'm gonna start building Athena's new rudder that's gonna sit right here. That is certainly a very important step to getting her back in the water. Over the last couple of weeks, I've built a mold using Athena's old rudder, and that mold is what I'm gonna use to construct the new rudder. I'll include links for those videos down in the description. I've got the car chock full of the majority of the supplies I'll need to build the new rudder. And to be honest, it's a little bit unpleasant out here. So let's head up to the workshop. It's a lot nicer here inside the workshop. And my Atlantic sheepdog, Jökul, has his little buddy Skipper to play with. Jökul is the one in the uh, bottom of that dog sandwich. Before we get started, I wanna give a great big thank you to the guys at HF Industry and Marine for weighing in on the construction of the new rudder. They get 100% credit for the laminating scheme you'll see a little later in the video. The plan when it comes to constructing the rudder is to lay up the two halves of the rudder in two slightly different ways. One half is gonna get vacuum infused and the other half is gonna get laid up by hand and then vacuum bagged. I don't have a lot of experience with vacuum infusion or vacuum bagging for that matter. In fact, this is gonna be my third attempt ever at vacuum infusion. So there's a pretty strong chance this is all gonna go horribly wrong, but it should still be a lot of fun. Now, why on earth would I use two different techniques, vacuum bagging for one half and vacuum infusion for the other half? Quite simply because I think it's gonna be interesting. I get to try out two different techniques and because I'm gonna be laying up the laminate in the vacuum bagging half by hand, we can do a little bit of a time comparison between laying up laminate by hand versus vacuum infusion. Because I'll be using infusion, West Systems regular old 105, which I've used for tons of stuff, is not really the best option. So I've picked up two different epoxies from West Systems Pro Set series. We have the 114 infusion resin and the 125 laminating resin. Even though these have Pro right there in the name, the resin is not that much more expensive than the regular 105. While I continue to yammer on a little bit, let me just go ahead and get the molds ready. So you might be wondering why I didn't use the Pro Set epoxies when I rebuilt the entire deck aboard Athena. I did consider it and I talked to West Systems Technical Support, but turns out unless you actually post cure the Pro Set epoxies, the physical characteristics of the laminates are basically the same compared to the regular old 105. Post curing two halves of a rudder seems like a manageable task. Post curing an entire deck seems, well, quite the opposite. Both of the two halves will get a couple of coats of wax. For this project, I'm gonna be using three different types of glass. They're right here behind me. And once I've gotten the wax on here and I've cleaned my fingers, we can go ahead and take a look at the glass. That's two coats of wax. I think that should be plenty considering I'm also gonna spray these with PVA, or at least I hope it's gonna be plenty. Let's get some PVA on those molds. And don't worry, I've moved both of the dogs into the office. Yep, there is at least one dog hair in here, but that's okay. That's just what's gonna make this rudder unique. Yep, you guys are gonna be a part of that rudder forever. Yes, you are, yes, you are. <laughs> I have just shy of an hour before I can apply the next coat of PVA. So let's take a look at the fiberglass. Here is the laminating scheme the guys at HF came up with. It's gonna be 600 gram biaxial, 600 gram unidirectional, 600 gram biaxial, and then two layers of 900 grams of something I've never really seen in person before. This is the regular 600 gram biaxial. You guys have seen me use quite a bit of this when I rebuilt the deck. Next up is the unidirectional one. And as you can see here, all of the fibers are going in the same direction, meaning along the zero axis, but uh, you guys will get a much better look at this a little later in the video. The third kind of fiberglass I've never seen in person before. I've seen something similar to it on Andy's channel where he refers to it as 1708. 
This has a tiny bit of chop strand on the back, and then on the front, it has fibers running along the zero axis and the 90 degree axis. The stuff I've seen on Andy's channel, the 1708, seems like it has more chop strand. On this stuff, it's just barely there, but it's definitely there. Do I really need a complicated laminating scheme like that for the new rudder? I highly doubt it seeing as the laminate on the old rudder is just four millimeters of chop strand, which has the strength of roughly a mild cheese left out in the noon sun for a couple of days. So yeah, but the thing I love about DIY is trying out new stuff and that laminating scheme, I think is gonna be fun. Now we're just playing the waiting game, the world's most boring game. I think we have another half hour to go here. I think that is about it for PVA, but it's almost eight o'clock at night, so I think we'll hold off on messing around with the glass until Saturday morning. Good morning, guys. It is a cold and wet Saturday morning. Last night, I took a stab at cleaning up the innards of the old rudder, and this is what I'm left with. As you can see, there was quite a bit of rust, dirt, and uh, some corrosion visible. I used a rotating steel brush to clean up the metal. After that little cleaning session, I can certainly see that there is some corrosion here. For instance, right here. If I bring you guys a little bit closer, this is what that corrosion looks like. It's about a millimeter deep. There's also some pitting, for instance, here, and also here on the rudder stock. Here's another example of some corrosion on the rudder stock. There are areas like that sort of scattered all over the place. And like, for instance, you can see here on the plate, there are some pitting and other kinds of defects. The funny thing is, when I saw rust oozing out the bottom of the rudder, what I was concerned about were the welds, but they look pretty decent. I think we'll circle back to the innards of the old rudder a little later in this video or possibly in the next video. For now, let's get to laminating. As you saw, both halves of the mold have been waxed and PVA'd, so we should be good to go. I've even created a little template here to guide me when I'm cutting the glass to hopefully minimize waste. First up is the 600 gram biaxial. I fully expect this one to be the easiest one to cut and also to fit in the mold. This works out pretty nice. I can fit the other half over here. So all I'm really wasting is this thin bit here in the middle. That's all the biaxial I need for the first shell. After a little bit of fiddling around and a little bit of additional trimming, this looks like a pretty nice fit. The next layer is going to be the unidirectional stuff, which I am sure is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. I know for sure that I won't be able to get this to conform to tight radiuses, but uh, I think that is okay. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up trimming this quite a bit. I've made some choices here. I've chosen to stop the unidirectional right here so that it doesn't cover this part. The reason for that decision is because something the infusion expert at HF Industry and Marine mentioned. On top of all of the fiberglass, there's gonna be a mesh, and that is to help let the resin flow through the vacuum infusion. But it's very important apparently to stop that mesh around five centimeters from the edge of the laminate. He also mentioned that UD has the unfortunate ability sometimes to stop the flow of the resin in vacuum infusion. So that means I need a little bit of a gap here where I'm not gonna be putting the mesh so I can't have the unidirectional here, or at least that's the theory. As should be quite evident, I am not an expert and I'm sure some of you guys who are might be shaking your head at the screen right now, but this is what I'm gonna go with. On top of the UD is gonna go that second layer of 600 gram biaxial. I need there to be room here on the side of the mold for the vacuum tape, so that's why I need to trim this. As you saw, I had to make some cuts here to get the BX to conform. That is just gonna get covered up by another piece of BX. With the second layer of biaxial in there, that means we've made it to this mystery fabric here. So let's cut two pieces of this.
I've already trimmed the first layer of this stuff, so now there's just this second layer left. Ta-da! That is all of the glass cut and trimmed for the first half of the mold. This part of the process is going to be the same for the infusion half and the half I'm going to lay up by hand, so I haven't timed this part. I will start a timer and then we can get started on the somewhat fiddly vacuum infusion prep work. Here's all of the stuff that's going to go on top of the glass. First layer is going to be some peel ply, then some mesh with release film, and finally some plastic. That was a fairly fiddly process. I'm gonna be generous and say that there's probably a 40% chance that this is all gonna work out. It's terrifying to try new stuff, but I've done my best here. I've put in some pleats to help the bag better conform to the mold. So uh, yeah, I guess the next step is to see if this is actually airtight. Well, there are clearly some leaks. The only thing that's left to do is just to go over everything and see if I can find them. I think this might be airtight now. The test is just to close off the bag, let this sit for five minutes, open this back up, and if the needle moves, well, then we weren't airtight. While we wait for those five minutes to just fly by, let's take a quick look at the setup here. There's a hose here that's gonna allow resin to flow into the mold. Along this edge here, there's some spiral tubing that's gonna allow the resin to flow out this way and then get pulled across the mold. On the other side of the mold, there are two separate pieces of spiral tubing. This one here and one here. Both of those are connected to hoses that have these clamps on them. The reason for there being two is the fact that the resin is going to reach this one sooner than this one. So once the resin reached this one, I can clamp that off and I'll still be able to pull resin through for the last little bit on this one here. Or at least that is the theory. I'm sure there's plenty of things here that can go wrong. And uh, in fact, I have noticed something that's not really perfect. I should have put in a set of pleats right here. I didn't. And uh, now I have a little bit of bridging here meaning the bag is not pulled all the way tight to the laminate here. It's very close, but not quite all the way. There's only one way of fixing that, and that is to put in those pleats. So that would mean tearing off the plastic and putting on new plastic. But I don't have enough plastic, so uh, yeah, we'll just have to close our eyes and pretend like everything is honky-dory. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna open this. If the needle moves, well, then we've got a leak somewhere and we're doomed to search for more leaks. Oof, awesome. So far, so good. We're airtight. That's an excellent start. And to be honest, I kind of had my doubts I'd actually succeed in getting this airtight, but uh, here we are. Let's go ahead and get some resin mixed up. Looking at the data sheet here, the mix ratio by weight is 3.65 to 1. It looks like mixing the resin and hardener by volume has a little bit more straightforward mixture ratio of 3 to 1. You think you buy this big container of hardener and uh, then this is what's hiding inside. I am kidding, of course, but this is the resin and here's the hardener. Once mixed, we have three to four hours of working time at 25 degrees Celsius. It is significantly colder in here, so we should have plenty of time. That is three cups of resin. Now I just need one cup of hardener. This is roughly 2.3, 2.2 kilograms of epoxy. Let's dump this into another bucket to mix it thoroughly.
I've clamped the hose to the bucket and I'm just going to let this sit for about 10 minutes just to get some of the bubbles out of there. I would love to degas this before starting the infusion, but I just don't have anything that's big enough for me to degas this kind of volume. Let's open up the clamps on the vacuum side and turn on the pump. When I open this, epoxy should start flowing through the tube. There it goes. Well, I'm committed now. There is no turning back. So uh, let's cue a time lapse and see how this turns out. Ta-da! This looks like a success. All of the laminate, especially where there's no mesh, so like for instance up here, you can see that it's dark. It's quite obviously very well wetted through. I'm not gonna lie, I am very relieved that turned out okay. I wasn't sure it was gonna, but uh, in the end we used a lot less resin than I thought. I think we're at 2.3 kilograms right now. In the time lapse, you might have noticed that after a little bit of time, we got a huge boost in speed. That was because this guy had squeezed the hose shut. So even though this was open, the hose was actually still kind of clamped. Because we used a lot less resin than I thought we were going to, there's actually enough left here that I can go ahead and use vacuum infusion for the second half of the mold too. I haven't fully made up my mind if I wanna do vacuum bagging tomorrow or infusion, but I'll figure that out tonight. As far as time consumption, uh, I think we used, like I said, an hour and a half to get everything set up. And then the infusion itself was an hour and five minutes. Because of shooting video and other stuff, Yuko and I have actually been here in the shop for 11 hours already. So I think we'll call it quits for today. And uh, head home to Oblix. Then tomorrow we can take a look at the spiffy new rudder half. Good morning guys, it is Sunday. And it seems like when I was planning this video, I forgot to take something rather important into account. And that is the uh, slightly longer cure time of the infusion resin, because this is not fully cured yet. If I take my fingernail, I can sort of push it into the laminate here. It's still a little bit squishy. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to open this up today. That also means I can't remove the clamps that are on the hoses. And that's kind of a showstopper because I needed some of those clamps to either do vacuum backing or infusion on the second half of the mold. Yes, that is very annoying, but I'm still really excited that it looks like I managed to pull off the vacuum infusion. I think I might have misunderstood something the infusion expert said though, because remember how I put down that UD and stopped it somewhere short of this edge, somewhere around here? Well, it actually turns out it stops right there and the mesh stops there. I think what he meant was if it's a laminate that consists of only UD, because clearly the resin crossed this little section of UD just fine. I'll give him a call tomorrow and see if I can figure out what's what. Now, I'm not worried about the strength of this part because the section where the UD is missing from, well, that has the rudder stuck in it. So I think that's gonna be plenty stiff. Hopefully tomorrow after work, I can get that second half of the rudder laid up. And then it's time to decide what type of foam to use in the rudder. And of course also whether or not to reuse the innards of the old rudder. When it comes to foam, there are some different choices. There are some foams that are definitely not well suited for this purpose. And there are some that are 
better suited, but uh, I think we'll save all of that for the next video in this little series. But you guys will have to wait just a little bit to see that video, because on Thursday I am flying to Los Angeles to spend two weeks with my girlfriend Ava. I've already pre-recorded one video and I'll see if I can squeeze in a second one, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull that off. But yeah, for next Sunday I've got that one pre-recorded video. Speaking of that pre-recorded video, there's a little bit of a timeline confusion with that potentially because what's going on in that video is actually what's been going on here in the workshop behind the scenes for the last three weeks. It's my initial experiments with vacuum infusion to sort of test the waters. It's a DIY video, so I'm making something. And there's probably also going to be a little bit of a fun surprise in the end of that video. So uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good video as long as you don't get confused by the weird timeline stuff. With all of that yammering on out of the way, I will end this video here. So as always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you! Look, he's sweeping stuff underneath the table!